Hello everyone, I wanted to talk to you about um, the two main types of how we use effects or how we can load effects into a DAW, so I'm using Cubase and they are insert effects and send effects. I'm going to show you why I use insert and send effects and how I use them but like with anything in production there's no sort of hard and fast rule it has to be done like this because of course there's loads of ways to sort of bend the rules or change things to make things creative such as we're going to look at reverb as a send effect but it can work equally as well as an insert effect it does work um, so this is just how I would perhaps load a mix what I've done I've just imported two separate acoustic guitars they're not even in the same key or timing it's just to show you on different tracks so if I looked at um, my track one here and looked at the insert effects perhaps first, the way I think of an insert effect is the signals coming in to the inserts and it's traveling through them. So 100% of the signal is coming through the effect and then out the other side. So if you think of things like a guitar amplifier, when you plug a guitar amp, a, a guitar into a guitar amp the signals passing through that amplifier and out through the speaker it's a similar sort of situation so that's why I I always put my amp sims as an insert effect because I want the whole signal to travel through that other things that work great are compressors um, deessers so a deesser takes away the s's out of um, vocals and the sibilants not all the s's but the, the high end sizzle um, eqs so you want when you're changing an EQ you want to hear the whole of the sound and when you make those changes generally you want it to be the whole of the signal you're working on. Now when I think of send effects which are down the right hand side here it's more so inserts are more of an in series together a send you can actually route it out so you've got your signal you can route it out, route it out actually control the amount of wet and dry you have and then route it back in so it's working more as a parallel but it's actually you can come out like if you think of I don't know if you've seen old um, more outboard gear or the older style outboard in recording studios where you actually use your aux auxiliary sends to control the amount say of a reverb and then come back in and they have racks of these equipment that they can do that with so as I said before with inserts I'd perhaps use my amp sim because I want the whole of the signal to be affected by that just routing through compressors are great so to control the dynamic range and you know I mentioned reverbs it's quite possible to put a reverb on an insert now if you do do that you'll end up if you have the mix so the whole of the signal wet so what I mean by that all of the reverb working is going to sound um, quite unusual well depending on what settings you have but what you do is use this blend between wet and dry so if it's wet you're using more of the effect and if it's dry it's more of the dry signal without the effect on so we can actually use this in a very similar fashion to we would an auxiliary send or um, a send effect where we can control the amount of wet and dry so it's quite possible but to use a reverb but I think one way to think about it is the fact that if you if you've got perhaps a slightly older computer or you're running on a laptop or something and you want to use say five vocals or five guitar tracks and you know you want reverb on all of those you'd have to load if you were working on inserts you'd have to load a reverb on each one of them so you'd have five separate instances of a reverb which can be quite CPU um, intensive whereas if you made just one effect send you can just use the same instant of that effect on each channel and I'm going to show you how to set that up. The other thing, that, um, I think the other bonus of that is if you're working with, um, not only does it say CPU but it's also the case of um, it keeps the continuity of the mix so if you've got a, you've done a vocal and you've got five takes of it, it's five, five tracks and you use different effects units, unless you match that with the same settings it's going to sound slightly different whereas if you use the same reverb it sounds like it's recorded in the same room and you're using the same reflection so it helps just keep everything slightly more glued together in the continuity at least of the mix so let's have a look how we would make an, uh, um, a send effect so 
I'm on the left hand side zone here I'm going to right click I'm going to go to add track you can also press the add track button there and then you see here we've got an effects channel so if I go to my reverb again so it's also set to this because it must be the last one I used so I'm going to go for a stereo effect and then I'm going to press just type reverb in there or rev, rev and press add track now it gives us the options now before it actually we close off this what I would do is either click wet only or just turn the mix up to full because I want the effects unit to be working flat out full and I'm going to change the amount of wet and dry using the send so as a general rule try and keep once I've made my send I send this to a full mix so this is fully wet so the full amount of the reverb okay what I might do just drag this to the bottom a minute so this is my reverb channel okay if I click back onto one of these acoustic guitars you see here these are my insert effects and these are my sends so we just did the add effects track and then hopefully it'll appear here which it has so I've clicked on one of these banks I can turn this on and there's my amount of wet and dry because you know I set the reverb mix to the full so now I that's fully wet mix and that's dry and I can blend the amount so it's really good visually to see the amount of effect using an ascend as well it's, it's, it's really simple there and that makes automation really easy as well which I'm going to show you so say we've got this acoustic guitar line we're on we're on this acoustic one so I may as well just solo him up I'll click the um, edit button well let's just make sure that's at the start is I'm going to click the edit button and I actually automate the amount of reverb I'm going to use so I'm going to start dry and I'm going to bring in the reverb so this you hear this a lot on pop mixes and stuff where the vocals can be quite dry until the end of a, fa a phrase a singing phrase and they'll actually boost the reverb up then so it unclutters, unclutters the mix but also can be used as an effect and you can get things called a reverb throw where you can really boost the reverb up to make it really expand out at the end of a um, sentence say so by using automation here we go we've got this read right so I'm going to press right and it's put read on automatically and now if I what I'm going to do I'm going to press um, play on the DAW and I'm just going to bring in the reverb so we, we increase the amount okay sorry about the distortion I'll just take read off, sorry. I just realized when I was explaining inserts, I put um, distortion on there, so I'll take the distortion off. Now, if I come out of there, I've just clicked off right now. You can actually see it's created this for me. So this is my dry and this is my wet reverb. So you can actually see coming in there as it goes so if I go back to my E you can actually you'll you'll be able to see this move as well as we go sorry about that here we go and you can see it's really easy to control the amount of wet and dry in the reverb so I find it easy to um, use automation just for wet and dry it's great because you can use the same effects unit so it saves on CPU um, and also keeps the continuity using the same reverb on different channels. The only other one thing I'll say about um, send effects, the fact that it's it's quite easy as well to um, if you want a, say you've got your reverb, but you're finding there's a lot of low end in your mix, you can clean the reverb up by actually take EQing the reverb. So a lot of these have settings inside their own plugins, but for a quick reference, you can actually if you wanted to take say some of the low end out of the reverb you can actually go to your reverb channel which I know this is my reverb here and I can go to the E and I can actually just take some of that low end out so if I wanted to get rid of some of the rumble actually on the effect now you might find that there's you can do that inside a plug in anyway so if you make an insert effect you can do that and it's it's possible to work that way it's just an it's, it's quite an easy fix to visually see it inside Cubase 
And when I, if I just go back to inserts again, so if we remember the insert generally will, will take the whole signal through the effect and ascend we can sort of root out or um, use an auxiliary, they call them, so it comes out and then back in. So there's nothing stopping you. Don't using inserts and sends and experimenting with anything. This is just how I would work. So as I say, I think reverbs are great on ascend. Delays are great. I've used the chorus before on ascend, but I've also used it a lot on inserts. So um, it's a case of experimenting with them. But certainly, if you find um, if you want to keep the same reverb for say a vocal and you've got a group of vocals, sends are great. If you want to EQ out some of the low end rumble on a reverb again you can do it inside the plugin but it, it's visually great automation's visually great for a send and I think if you're running an older slightly older computer sends are great because you can use just one instance of the effect having said that the inserts are fantastic if you're using amp sims compressors DS's EQ's that you know they both they work really well together so good luck <laughs>